I'm David Carey, a resident voice and text director here at Oregon Shakespeare Festival, and I was voice and text director on Viet Gone. When I went into the production, I'd, I'd had an email communication with Maya Dralis, the director, and we'd been thinking about, well, what might be some of the challenges uh, with this production? And uh, one, of, one of the key factors was uh, the character Quang, who uh, by the end of the play, he, uh, we see him as an old man. And we also see him talking to his American son, and uh, the playwright, uh, Kui Gwyn, had written it in such a way that uh, this character, uh, by this point in the play, needed to be speaking English with a Vietnamese accent. Throughout the play, the Vietnamese characters uh, are speaking basically in, in contemporary American speech. But because by the end of the play, this character is uh, talking as a real person, not as a character in a play. Uh, Cui Nguyen, the playwright, wanted to capture his father's uh, Vietnamese accent, so he'd written it so that the actor playing that part should be speaking with a, a heavy Vietnamese accent. Uh, and so that was something that I uh, set about preparing for uh, fairly early on in the process uh, to work with the actor James Ryan uh, on developing that Vietnamese accent. So that was one of the, the major things that I went into this production thinking about. But in addition to that, uh, May had, had pointed out that uh, a number of the actors are, are playing several different characters. And so uh, vocal characterization for each of those characters is also a factor that was in my mind uh, in terms of, well, uh, how are we going to distinguish between uh, Amy Wosky playing uh, Kwang's wife and then playing a hippie uh, and then playing a translator uh, on, on the USS Midway. Uh, so that, that was a factor just to think about the different uh, characters and what their vocal characterization would need to be. It started off with me doing the research but then as I met with the actors it becomes a process of uh, negotiation, if you'd like, or discussion with the actor as to how they want to make use of these resources. Uh, and with James Ryan, who was doing the Vietnamese accent, uh, he'd, he'd already done his own research into that, but I, I wanted to sharpen things up, uh, really get a little bit more detail into what uh, a Vietnamese speaker uh, of English might do. And we wanted to find a level of Vietnamese accent that would serve the play, be understandable to the audience, and yet still be recognizably a Vietnamese accent. Uh, and so we, we had to work to find that gradation uh, of the accent that would, would still sound strong, but also once the audience kind of realized what was happening, that they would be able to tune into it. Uh, and uh, James worked exceedingly hard on that and has got a very successful uh, version of a Vietnamese accent. That's speaking from my professional uh, experience. I don't know what a Vietnamese speaker would say about that, uh, but I hope that they would, if coming to this play, they would see, oh yes, that's, that's something I recognize. Mm -hmm. It may not be uh, entirely authentic, but it has to be theatrical. It has to read for an American audience, and that's what I feel we've achieved very successfully. Um, so there was a, a, another factor uh, involved which uh, Maya Dralis had sig signaled to me in advance, which was working on the rap songs, uh, which uh, she, she was very concerned that the, the rap songs weren't just uh, a, a, a sort of wash of, of words. She wanted specificity, she wanted clarity, uh, that this, the songs really are an integral part of the storytelling of the play. Uh, and so she wanted uh, that to, for the audience to be able to understand as much as possible within the, the, the context of, of rap style what the, the, 
the speakers and singers were saying. Uh, and so that was something that I was paying particular attention to. Uh, the, the, each rap song has its, its own uh, particular style, but uh, working with the actors on, on the songs, uh, it, it very quickly became apparent that it wasn't just about uh, clarity, it wasn't just about um, making sense of things, it was also about where are you going to breathe? Uh, because uh, a lot of the lines of rap have to be very continuous and quite long uh, and, and a, a singer or speaker of rap has to be very agile not only in articulation uh, but also in where they're going to breathe in order to make uh, sense and, and order to, in order to fit the rhythm of the rap as well. Rap has a very particular rhythmic energy to it uh, in each style that's, that's being used and so the singer has to work within that but just as with iambic pentameter that rhythm is there ultimately to support the storytelling uh, and that's where we uh, the journey that we took with it was was towards once the actors felt confident with the style of, of rap and had got to a place where they really knew what they were saying we could start to uh, uh, tailor it more to something which was much more about telling the story, had much more uh, sort of emotional truth to it. It was coming from a deeper center. It's, it's very similar to the process that one works on with a speech, a soliloquy, say, from, from Shakespeare, where the actor has to basically, first of all, understand what they're saying and then feel how the rhythm of the speech is working, but then to work with how that uh, is connected to the character's emotional journey through the play. And then uh, my colleague Claudia Alec, uh, who is a rap artist herself, uh, she came in at, at, at a later stage and uh, her contribution was just outstanding. It really lifted things to that extra dimension of working with the rap energy of the song and the character and the emotion. She was just uh, instrumental in bringing it all together, it felt to me. Uh, and uh, it was great to feel that sense of collaboration that, that uh, everybody brought their best game to that process. Mm -hmm.